simply the Ruka best. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another smashing, another informative, another fun-filled episode of Piki and Shackle. The name is Makal Katide. Uh, and as always, I have supernatural guests. One thing I love about the show is the people that we bring here are superheroes in real life. And today we have none other than the disruptor herself, Nikki Verne. How are you, Nikki? Hi, I'm good. And you, thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm good, man. So today's topic is disrupt yourself or disrupted, same title. And yeah, man, I, I, a lot of people don't know what this disruption is. So a few years ago, let me tell you a quick story. A few years ago, I was privy to a lot of what's happening in the country before the four IR uh, discussions were in the public domain. So we started having those discussions and I met a guy, a friend of mine. Um, so uh, this guy said to me, uh, let's do that. So this guy said to me, Makawe, listen here, there's a very popular company in the country that is going to have a a bank of their own and it's a health uh, company i said discovery he said yes so discovery was going to disrupt the banking so that is as far as i know what disruption is please mm -hmm. enlighten us more because you know more what when we talk of disruption whether it's personal whether it's co economic what are we talking about oh wow that is interesting well in my opinion is really about things changing you know things um evolving and there's change happening and we have to uh catch up with it somehow so disruption is basically you know moving from uh, all ideas to new ideas, moving from old ways of doing things to new ways of doing things. It's basically about um, embracing technology, so to say. So uh, that is that is disruption for me. Okay, so in terms in terms of disruption, right? Yeah. When you talk of, I, I understand the notion of disruption when it comes to technology and whatnot. Um but how do you apply how do you then apply that into your personal space when you call yourself a disruptor what are yeah. you what are you doing differently compared to uh, me it's not a disruptor. <laughs> perhaps you are a disruptor and don't even know it yet <laughs> no i I, I know i'm a disruptor you see <laughs> but exactly uh, the average joe is not exactly so uh, what for me in in the in the personal sense of it it's about embracing change you know that sometimes can happen to you without even you being aware of it or without you initiating it but nonetheless that the change happens and then you are forced to to embrace it and find other ways to survive so in some in some way you are disrupting and or maybe some people uh like you mentioned that the average girl is not getting it in some way no one is really immune to disruption because because you are either being disrupted or you are disrupting so we are all affected in uh, about are about disruption in one way or the other so for me it is really about looking for new ways to adopt new ways to stay relevant new ways to do things that i would otherwise not have thought of it if the world was not changing so that is disruption for me as an individual it might be different from person to person, but that is it for me. Okay, so I hear you. And uh, I hear you from the from the personal. So you said a person is, it's either you disrupt the world or the world disrupt you. Absolutely. Which one do you choose? To disrupt the world or you being disrupted by the world and why? uh well i have been affected by both i have been disrupted and i guess i'm disruptive in some way <laughs> now 
so like i mentioned earlier there's really no no neutral ground i would of course prefer to be the one disrupting because when you disrupt you are sort of in control of how things can play out maybe not entirely but you have some sort of control over the outcome you are hoping to get but when you sit back and you are being disrupted you don't have any con- any type of control at all and i will give an example of for me when i got disrupted maybe before i go on how i probably turn around and sort of disrupting but i got disrupted when i got retrenched from a job that i had back in 2016 and at the time i did not even imagine I didn't see the disruption coming. I did not see the retrenchment coming. I was very excited about climbing the corporate ladder, going to school, furthering my education and just doing what we've all been told to go to the school, get the certificate, get the job. That was my plan. But as soon as I got my my just my one foot in the door, then retrenchment happened. And so that was me being disrupted. I had to find ways now, okay, how do I survive after this? How do I stay relevant after this? How do I keep on moving, you know, and still having a way maybe to stay relevant in the world and sort of make an income. I had to then find ways to to mitigate this this um disruption that had happened to me so to say. So that was disruption happening to me which I totally had no control over. If I had some sort of control I would never have chosen to be retrained or to lose my job or anything of that nature. But it happened to me. I got disrupted but then I had to then look on the other side of disruption like okay, how am I going to rise out of this? So okay. the question that sometimes I ask people is which side of disruption are you sitting on because you are either being disrupted or you are disrupting Simply the best. Welcome back welcome back to PK and Shekold live and exclusive on Vuga Online Radio uh, the name is Michael Katide and I'm spending my Sunday morning with a serial disruptor by the name of Nikki Vert So Nikki I I'm a disruptor. I I know that for a fact. Uh, the fact that I'm doing this radio show means I am a disruptor. I do conversations that your average show does do um you know um so I was also in the corporate space. Life was mm-hmm. grand. Uh, uh you know, I was making uh good money until <laughs> covid happened <laughs> so in my uh sh- whole entire life right i have never mm. not been in, in control whether whether it was uh you know going through a forced studying business i've always been in control of everything but mm. covid happened and i was not in control for the first time mm you understand um and it, it 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 brought back the conversations that i had with with uh you know uh, this friend of mine uh, who who were talking about discovery now the same guy said if jesus was uh alive now he would be the biggest disruptor as a matter of fact he said jesus would be would, would be such a disruptor that he would not have a physical church he would have a whatsapp church with a million members you understand <laughs> right that Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I had it, you know, I had a chat with him and he said Makawe, uh, you know, think innovation, think uh mm. something that will le- le- leave a legacy of your name uh without without putting maximum effort. And that's one of the things that I've noticed about disruption. So in your corporate world in your uh, space you probably applied yourself 149% so you're consumed in this uh, world where you have no control but your application is more than 100% and mm-hmm. then you come to being a disruptor and you realize that you know the you have so much time to do something because you're the only one that's doing it or you are part of the few that are doing it. So, this is where we are. I have my mm-hmm. radio show, 
I have, uh, you know, YouTube channel. I have uh, a few uh, TV shows coming up uh, starting in uh, March or April. So from being a corporate guy wearing a tie, I've, mm. I've done a 360. You understand? Yeah. Now, let me ask you this, Nikki. Being a, being a disruptor, does it rely on your confidence or you just don't want to lose? Um, <laughs> that is an interesting question. Okay, I would, I would say this. I remember having a conversation with, um, with a friend uh, not so long ago. And he's thinking of quitting his job, right? Which is what you're saying, you COVID happened, but for him, he's thinking of quitting his job and doing something that he is in control of. And yeah. but he's afraid, of, okay? And he's a very educated um, guy. And I remember telling him that, you know what? You have like, he's got a master's, master's degree, I think something like that. And he's been to different places. He's done amazing things within the corporate world. I'm mean, like, look, you have things that I wish I did, you know, even when I was still in the corporate world. But there's one thing that you seem to be lacking, which I ha which I kind of have it, and it's called audacity. And then you started laughing, <laughs> 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 which is cor courage, right? The ability to have courage to face the world on your own. I'm like, you know what? I don't have the certificate. I don't. I'm not an academician by any stretch of imagination. Even in the corporate world that I was, I, I worked in admin. I wasn't doing anything fancy. So I was literally still finding my way around. So I didn't come from this background of, you know, being educated and uh, having a lot of experience in the corporate world and things like that. I did not have it. So when I step out, I step out just being. Uh, believing in myself, you know, having confidence that you mentioned and just having a lot of audacity, like, you know, what, I'm going to, I can do this. I, I, I think I can do this. I believe my, in myself that I think I can do this. If someone had told me five years ago that I could write a book, I would literally laugh in their face. I'm like, come on, like, who, who? Like you said, who? So, but now, I mean, referring to myself as an author is something I'm still getting used to because I did not believe that I could do this. So confidence plays a very huge uh, role when you are stepping out on your own, you know, to answer the question that you, you ask if it's about confidence, you know, it's, it's, it's key, it's everything. Because sometimes your certificate will not save you on the street. Your certificate may save you in the corporate world, in the boardroom and things like that. But when you face the world on your own and you're like, you know what, I'm going to do it the street way. I don't mean in a gangster way or anything like that. You know what I mean by the street, right? So you need the confidence to step out on your own. It will help you much more than your certificate could ever help you. And so, yes, confidence is really very important. You have to have a lot of audacity. You have to have a lot of daring inside of you to be able to step out on your own. Remember, there's no one here holding you. There's no um, paycheck coming in at the end of the month. When you're on your own, you don't know when the next gig will happen. You don't know when you have the next thing that will pay. That is literally how it works. So you have to have a lot of self-belief and a lot of confidence in your own self and in what you are doing. Okay, so in terms of your book, right, what what yeah. prompted you to write your book and what what are the sort of the the highlights of the stuff that you have in your book? Because it's quite okay. an interesting book. Anyway, to answer your question, you know, um, on how I came about writing the book. Like I mentioned earlier, I got disrupted when I was in the, in the corporate world. And one thing uh led to another and it ended up being a book which i didn't plan to actually write a book but this is what happened when i got uh retrenched there was a lot of confusion going on in my life at the time because I was asking a lot of questions, you know, why me? How would I survive? Am I am I not too young to be retrenched? Uh, like, isn't retrenchment supposed to be for old people? I had all those type of bizarre ideas running in my head. But one thing kept that stood out at the time was that every time I would turn on the TV or on the news, I would hear about retrenchment, which was a particular piece of news that I've never been paying attention to. But now that I have been retrenched, 
it kept jumping on me over and over and so i was like oh so i'm not the only one facing this apparently a lot of organizations are, are letting people go so it was like you know when you buy a car and then suddenly you start seeing that particular mark of car everywhere so that was what was happening to me i was like okay this whole thing about retrenchment is becoming too much so i throw myself on the internet like just google like what causes retrenchment um how do organizations stay afloat when they retrench so many people those were the questions i went on google and started researching on and it just led me down this rabbit hole where i was like oh wow okay there's a whole lot going on here and so for the first time i started realizing that there are machines replacing people at work you know the whole automation and um artificial intelligence uh technologies being brought about by the fourth industrial revolution i started for the first time coming across these concepts which i did not know back then because remember i'm not from a technology background and so i was i was fascinated i was like oh wow so machines can replace humans at work this is quite interesting and this is quite fascinating so i just became more and more fascinated with what i was finding on on online on the internet and i was i started writing about it on my social media on my facebook i was very active on facebook at the time so i started writing about it on social media and i realized that a lot of people were just as fascinated as i was and many people were intrigued about the things i was writing and a lot of people were asking me questions as, as though i or some sort of expert in, in relation to new technologies, changing work and life. Meanwhile, I was like really clueless. So it kind of gave me some hope that, oh, okay, I guess I'm not the only clueless one here, but nonetheless, I'm putting these things online. And it came to a point where I realized that people are really intrigued with this. A lot of people are fascinated with it. Maybe I can start blogging about it. After all, I had a lot of time in my hands so I could write. So I started a blog and I would then write articles about it, uh, basically, and then share them on my social media. And then one thing led to another. I remember at one point I started thinking, okay, I think someone should write a book about this because apparently people want this knowledge. A lot of people seem to be hungry for this type of knowledge and how they can prepare themselves for, for the world that technology is drastically changing. But when the thought of writing the book came, I immediately denied. I was like, no, it cannot be me. I cannot write. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I think you have to be like really smart to write a book. You know, I had always respected authors, you know, like, I mean, how do you pour so many words out of you? So I was like, no, definitely not me. I thought like I couldn't speak proper English. I felt like my English was too broken, you know, to write a book. I came up with all sorts of excuses. I don't have a degree. I cannot write a book. But nonetheless, I kept writing the articles I was writing on my blog, right? But it, a time came where it felt like an, when an idea takes hold of you and you don't do it, you become miserable. So I realized that if I don't do this whole book thing, I'm probably going to just become miserable for the rest of my life. But nonetheless, there was some fulfillment I found from writing those articles on my blog. Uh, it gave me a lot of life. You know, when I lost my job, it felt like I lost a huge part of me. But when I started writing these things on social media and, and I started a blog, there was a new life that came inside of me and i felt like okay i think if i feel this happy if that's even the word that i felt fulfilled i think that's the word if i'm feeling this fulfilled doing this probably i can write a book so it evolved from those social media posts from my blog articles basically into a book you know i never sat down one day and planned and said okay i'm going to write a book no this whole thing happened by default and so that's really literally how i came about writing the book you know some of my friends today they will still be like surprised like i can't believe you wrote a book i'm like listen i'm more surprised than all of you that i wrote a book <laughs> <laughs> so literally that is how the book came about and i thought wow. to myself what better title to than to you know i came up there were so many titles though but i thought at the end of the day what better title than disrupt yourself or be disrupted because here i was at work minding my business and someone disrupted my life so 
it is either you are disrupting or someone will disrupt you. So it was basically based on my experience and what I'd gone through. I decided, okay, this title would perfectly fit. And the main highlights of the book, as the other question that you asked, would be about, you know, people should start getting themselves comfortable in having uncomfortable conversations about your future, about work and how technology is changing the world and how technology is changing life. For example, a student who is currently in school right now. Pause, 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 pause. Okay. Pause. You're, you're <laughs> going into my other question now. Let's take a quick break. And then after the break, we're going to talk automation because central to uh, the 4IR is automation and, you know, the human, us humans or us South Africans, I'm not going to talk for people outside the country we're not we're not ready for that so after the break we talk automation simply you are listening to Vuga online you are rocking with the best you were saying you were talking about the highlights of your book and you're about to talk about uh, a, a, give an example of a student but i wanted to and, I, and i'm sure this will lead to my question so key or central to the fourth industrial ev- uh, revolution, whether we like it or not, uh, there's a large part of automation, mm-hmm. right? Uh, what is automation, according to your understanding, and how how does it impact us on a daily basis? Oh, oh wow, that's an interesting question. Um, automation is basically the when processes that used to be done by humans are now being um done by machines you know where we've seen automation happen in nearly every every industry in the past decade or so it was mostly in factories where machines took over you know labor that used to be done by 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 humans but now automation is almost in every every industry you know take retail for example uh, maybe it's not so rampant in south africa but some retail outlets in the western world are entirely being run by robots you know maybe not robots so to say but by automated systems um there's there's um there is a new uh store being run by amazon in the u.s they, they have it only in a couple of locations in the united states where you walk into the store you pick whatever you, you groceries you need and you just scan your face and walk out there are no cashiers in there is nobody in <laughs> so that yep. is that is automation to the 10th degree so to say because there are no cashiers in at all and there are also some restaurants that are being run by robots and COVID-19 facilitated this whole automation also, you know, to another level because now with people worrying about, uh, you know, the safe, their safety and always having to sanitize and always having to socially distance themselves some up, some restaurants have now employed robots much more than they would have if COVID did not happen. So these are things that are already very rampant in, in the in the western world but now coming back to south africa at some point it's it's just a matter of time before that level of automation comes here where we go into a supermarket and we pick our groceries and we scan them out ourselves and we walk out you know or we pay with our card and we walk out just a minor example for what is happening now there used to be a time where you walk into a supermarket and you pick your groceries you go to the cashier they, 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 they scan everything and you hand your bank card to the cashier but now we no longer hand our bank cards to the cashier we put our card by ourselves we put our pin and that is some level of the industry training us to do these things on our own you know when we graduate from this step and we're very comfortable to put our cards and pay it will be the next thing will be you you scan your thing by yourself <laughs> that is where i see this going right right that's my personal opinion that is where i see it going at some point we'll be the one scanning our things and paying there's some mcdonald's in outlet right here in south africa where you go yeah. you don't you 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 order your food via an automated kiosk system where you punch and you choose what you want and you pay you just go to the till to collect your food 
So that is automation really happening. I mean, a lot of us are seeing it, but we don't yet know what name to put into it. But literally, that is automation. I wonder what Kusatu is saying about this. Uh, and uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, because <laughs> I, I, as I believe, um, South Africa is one of the the world's most unionized uh, countries, and I, I seriously wonder what uh, Kusatu and the other uh, uh, federal union is saying. Uh, but yeah, so this is my question, right? Yeah. Central to automation is artificial intelligence. Mm-hmm. And artificial intelligence um, doesn't necessarily take into consideration that there's something called God. <laughs> no. Are you not worried? Are you a religious person, Nikki? Yes, no, I wouldn't say religious. I'm a very spiritual person and I believe in God. But religious is not the way I would describe myself. <laughs> yes. So my question is, now, we talk of us being disruptors and coming up with all these automation systems, uh, which are infused with thousands of neuron activity that's related to artificial intelligence uh and then um, it gets to a point where you know ai rules our lives more than the notion of a god ruling our lives mm-hmm. Have, has that ever crossed your mind when it comes to ai i don't think that there's anything that um cannot be done <laughs> and i think that as humans yeah we should rightfully be be worried about ai because it's one of those technologies that it can even take over and, and do things by itself so um it can out um you know move beyond what the human that created it wanted it to do it can move beyond those type of processes and take over things and do it by itself so that is where ai becomes scary and people should be rightfully worried i think there is actually a documentary uh by is it uh, around ai with the interview from elon musk talking about people should be worried about ai he's like, the last <laughs> he's the last person to speak of ai He's going into, into monkey's brains. I mean, I, mean, I know the it, irony. Yeah, Elon Musk must just uh, come back to South Africa <laughs> and buy a, a, a farm in Bufadar and just live there. And, and leave, leave. I know, I know the irony, but nonetheless, he has a point though, even though his, his businesses, his cars, they run on AI and everything he does typically involves AI. But now when he speaks, we should listen because he knows what he's talking about. He knows, he has seen this thing in action. So he knows what he's talking about. We shouldn't just dis, discard him and be like, ah, let's, don't listen to Elon Musk. But he knows what he's really talking about because he works with AI. He, he has seen how this thing can behave and how this thing can take over processes and start directing its, its own path and start writing it, its own its uh, its own code. So he has seen it. I think that people should take his warnings seriously. I, I do, I take his warnings seriously though. Yeah, but you see, now AI is going to disrupt us. <laughs> it's already disrupting us. It's not even going to. It's already oh, disrupting no, but, us. But you must remember that we still have choices in the matter. Uh, but yeah, my, my, so my, my, as a matter of fact, we must have a, a secondary conversation to this. <laughs> AI okay. is, 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 is so, so, so entrenched onto uh, the fact that I'm having this conversation with you. AI is working, right? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Now, let's say 90% of our lives are run by some form of artificial in- intelligence. Uh, and we've, we have been disrupted, you know. In as much as we, me and you claim that we are disruptors, but AI has disrupted us. You understand? Uh-huh. So, mm-hmm, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My question, and, and I, I think I must uh, ask... Uh, the the gatekeepers of christianity what is the consideration when it comes to ai and god what are people saying is there is that even a discussion or we just say i know god will squash the ai but anyway let's have a quick break and then uh, after the break we wrap up the show and yeah so that i can open a bottle of red wine 
simply the Ruka best. Online. Nikki, mm-hmm. we've had a very lengthy conversation. What would you like to say in closing? And where can people uh, get hold of Nikki? Where can they get hold of your books and all stuff like that? Oh, great! Thank you. Um, I think as a closing remark, I would like to point out. You mentioned something about us being in control, right? Uh, but the, the control that we have, uh, in uh, if we're going back to the topic of AI, there's certain things that we cannot fully control when it comes to technology and how it is changing the world and how, you know, uh, processes are changing. I remember, let me tell you a quick story. In I, I was giving a, a presentation for an event that I was invited to in, in Nairobi, Kenya. That was before COVID happened, just before COVID happened. And when I finished my talk, someone stood up and, and said, no, Nikki, Africa is not ready for this whole fourth industrial revolution. We should be talking about, you know, processes that will still benefit Africa from the third industrial revolution and things like that, because there are places in Africa that don't even have electricity yet, places we still don't have water and things like that. And those are very true valid points, right? But I remember asking him what phone he was using. And at the time he was using iPhone 11, I think. I don't know what number we are now anyway. <laughs> I don't use iPhones. He said he was no, using no. iPhone 11. And I asked him, okay, that's interesting. Uh, apparently he was much more foil advanced than me because I wasn't even using iPhone 11 at the time. <laughs> and then I asked him the second question. When last did you go to the bank? He said, no, he can't even remember. He does most of his banking online. I'm like, okay, there we go. So you cannot sit and say that Africa is not ready for 4 I R. Meanwhile, you are very much entrenched in the 4 I R systems. You're here using iPhone 11. You don't go to the bank. You sit on your computer or on your phone and you do your banking transactions right at the comfort of your own home. Probably you also order food and it's delivered at your door doorsteps. Probably you also touch <clears throat> buttons and the taxis out waiting for you and things like that. This is for IR in action. So we cannot sit back and say Africa is not ready for this. Meanwhile, Africa is absolutely entrenching it and is practicing for IR every day. And my second point was that these technologies are not asking if you are ready. This fourth industrial revolution is not asking if you are ready. It just comes. You have to find a way to navigate it on your own. You have to find a way to survive it on your own. It's never going to sit and ask, are you ready? Can I come now? Like, hello, hello, is someone in? No, change doesn't happen that way, especially technological change. It does not happen that way. It is a wave that is coming. If you are on its path, it sweeps you off. If you see it coming, move aside and find a way. Okay, how do I catch up with this? It looks like I'm going to be left behind. So I say that story to say this. We cannot control the fourth industrial revolution. But what we can do is to find ways, you know, so that the impact it will have in our life is not so uh, uh, disruptive and so dramatic and so... Uh, you know, destructive, so to say. So we cannot really stop this revolution, but we can work on how it impacts our life. And how do we work on that? By changing our mindset, by adopting a new mindset that, you know what, this is the world in which we're living now. So what can I do differently so that I will not be left behind? Ask yourself, maybe you are in school. This certificate I am even, you know, studying. By the time I graduate, will it be relevant? Maybe I need to jump ship. Maybe I need to completely abandon this and do something else. Maybe I don't even need a degree. Maybe I need a three months short course. These are the type of mindsets that we need to start, you know, adopting. Maybe I should forget about looking for a job. Maybe I need to start, you know, something on the side. Maybe I need to start a side hustle. Even if you have a job right now, just ask, maybe I need to start a, high, uh, a side hustle and things like that. As much as the revolution is destroying jobs, it is also giving so many opportunities to so many people that we never had before, that our parents never had. You can start an online radio now, thanks to technology. That is not something that happened, you know, what was possible maybe 10 or 15 years ago. 
But these are opportunities. A lot of people can get into podcasting. A lot of people can become bloggers. A lot of people are YouTubers now. If technology did not happen, all these great YouTubers that are making a living of YouTube or making a living of podcasting, these people would have relied entirely on the government system or on the private sector to employ them. But thanks to technology, they are able to create a life of their own using these disruptions that are happening. So there is is a double-edged sword that is killing people on this side and is also raising people to life on this side. That is how technology works. <laughs> and so basically, I think that is the best way that people can start looking at this. Shift your mindset. Don't have the mindset of, no, we're told to go to school, get a certificate and get a job. That was true in the days of our parents. Right now, it's no longer the truth. The, a certificate is no longer a, the a, um the key to success you, you can have a certificate and you just hang it on your wall and sit at home you know watching netflix and, and looking at it every day and it's really literally doing nothing for you meanwhile there are digital opportunities you could plug yourself in and try to see which one can work for you so these are things that i can you know as concluding remarks tell people shift your mindset try new things see which you know which area in the digital space you can plug yourself and things like that don't just focus on i'm um, going to get a degree ask yourself is this degree even relevant for the times in which we're living now you know how is this degree going to help me will this degree still be relevant you know in five years even if you're currently working now ask yourself the position that i'm currently occupying can it be automated can a machine replace me you know these are uncomfortable questions to ask because they're very scary it scares people but if you don't ask someone else is going to ask the question is this position even necessary in this organization maybe we should get rid of this person someone is thinking like that maybe that's what your boss is thinking you don't even know yet so these are things that people <laughs> these are things that people need to you know start asking themselves these questions because if you are not thinking and asking those questions your boss or your organization is thinking and asking themselves this question how do we reduce our workforce how do we take um uh, adopt new technologies to cut down costs and increase our efficiencies and things like that when the organizations are adopting these new technologies some people will pay the price within that organization you don't know if you're going to be the next you have to think outside the box where do people find you i am online and my name is on the same on every on, on, on every platform nikki bird <laughs> There are not two of us. Google Nicky Bird. I'm the only one that comes up. <laughs> I love it. You know, I'm the only. No, I'm, I'm so easy only. to be found. I'm so easy to be found. Nicky Bird on all social medias. You'll find me there. That's something I'm not active. I'm more active on LinkedIn and and uh, Facebook. But I'm 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 trying to find my feet on the streets of Instagram and Twitter let's, and things like that. All right. All right. Nikki, thank you very much. That was uh, refreshing. Uh, and my book uh, not... is available at uh, this exclusive books. Uh, so if anybody is interested in reading my work, you can get it at um, exclusive books nationwide. And it's also available on my website, nikivert.africa. Yes, and Amazon for ebooks for people. Yes. Who... <laughs> also, I'm available on Amazon. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, Nikki, thank you very much. In closing, I'd like to leave you with this question as a, as a listener or a viewer. So, are you ready? Are you ready for the fourth industrial revolution? Or are you like many people who say, no, 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 we still have another 10, 20 years before we, we understand what four, uh, the four IR is. Uh, with that, uh, Macau Katide signing out. I shall see you next week. Behave yourself and love one another.